Myself, Dr. Jibran Amar presents to you Simply Pathology and today we are back with an important lecture. Today we are going to read about the gastrointestinal stromal tumor also called as GIST and it is a very very important exam question and we are expecting this question for this year's final exams MDDNB. So what are the objectives of this lecture? So we are going to go through the basics of the GIST. Okay, what is the etiology? What is the epidemiology? What is GIST? Okay, what are the common sites? Okay, then we are going to go with the gross and microscopic features of GIST followed by immunophenotyping, role of diagnostic molecular pathology. This, this point is very, very, very important. So, a recent advanced question based on the diagnostic molecular pathology of GIST can be asked in this year. Along with that, the prognosis of GIST is very, very important. So, let us begin. So, GIST is a mesenchymal neoplasm with variable behavior characterized by differentiation towards the interstitial cells of Kahal. So, what is the essential criteria? The essential criteria for diagnosis according to the fifth edition of WHO is an intramural submucosal or subserosal mass with a spindle cell epithelioid or mixed morphology, kit and or dog one immunopositivity, SDHB loss and SDH deficient gist. Desirable criteria is demonstration of kit or PDGFRA gene mutation and approximately 85% of the tumor. So, what are these mutations? We are going to discuss in the later half of the video. Now, very importantly, GIST can occur anywhere in the GI tract. However, approximately 54% of all GIST arise in the stomach, 30% in the small bowel, including the duodenum, 5% in the colon and rectum, and about 1% in the esophagus. Rarely, the GIST arise in the appendix. About 10% of the cases are primarily disseminated, and the site of origin cannot be established with, uh, with certainty. Extra gastrointestinal GIST occur predominantly in the mesentery, omentum, and retroperitoneum most probably represents a metastasis from an unrecognized primary or a detached mass GIST from the GI. GI. So clinically, the most common presentation of GIST includes a vague abdominal symptom as well as symptoms related to mucosal ulceration, acute and chronic bleeding, and abdominal mass and tumor perforation. Smaller GIST are detected incidentally while doing endoscopy, surgery, or CT. Advanced GIST spread into the peritoneal cavity and the retro, uh, retroperitoneal space and often metastasize to the liver. Bone skin soft tissue metastases are infrequently observed whereas lung metastases if you see they are very very rare. Systemic uh, spread can occur years after detection of the primary tumor. Gastric gist exhibits a higher local recurrence rate as compared to small bowel gist. So, gist which are arising in the small bowel, okay, they have a higher chance of you know, uh, you know, abdominal dissemination and metastasis, whereas the gastric gist, they are having a higher chance of local recurrence. So, gastric gist, they exhibit a higher local recurrence as compared to small bubble gist, uh, 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 which has a higher rate of abdominal dissemination and metastasis. So, gastric gist, they have a high risk of local recurrence. Uh, small bubble gist, they have a high risk of abdominal dissemination and metastasis or distant spread. Epidemiologically, if you see, incidental sub-centimeter gist, also called as micro gist, seem to remarkably common. Okay, so they are very common. Approximately, if you see, 25% of the gastric gist, excluding the micro gist, they are clinically malignant. So, 25% of the gastric gist are clinically malignant. Gist accounts for 2.2% of all the malignant gastric tumors. Sporadic gist can occur at any age with a peak incidence in the sixth decade of life. So, the median age is 60 to 65 years and there is a slight male predominance as well over here. Okay, So, there is a slight male predominance. A small fraction of GIST affects children and adolescents. Such tumors are usually succinate dehydrogenase deficient or SDH deficient and KIT PDGFRA wild type. Now, you know any mutation which is wild type that means they are the normal variety. Okay, And if they are mutant then we will call it as KIT PDGFRA mutant. So, those individuals in whom the kit and the PDGFRA are the wild type, they can have the SDH deficient variety and such tumors are affecting the children and adolescents. More with regards to such deficient variety will be discussed in details in the diagnostic molecular pathology of GIST. SDH deficient GIST, they arise in the stomach. They are more common in females and they are affecting younger patients. Okay. Okay. Coming to the etiology, most of the GIST as most of the other tumors, they are sporadic in nature. 5 to 10 percent they are occurring as a part of a syndrome and most of the syndromic gist if you see they are SDH deficient. Okay, So, they are occurring as a part of 
for example as a syndrome as a part of non hereditary carney's triad so you this is a very important viva question what is carney's triad so it is basically a triad of gist pulmonary chondroma paraganglioma over here the gist is occurring as a part of a syndrome and most of such syndromic gist they are sdh deficient variety of gist okay these are non hereditary and the other one which occurs as a part of a syndrome is autosomal dominant variety that means this is hereditary in nature as a part of carney Tatakis syndrome. So, over here, if you see, there is a syndrome. So, they are occurring in the context of gist and paragangliomas and they are occurring in the context of SDH mutation, but it is in the germ line. So, SDH deficient gist can most commonly, they are, you know, associated with the syndromic gist and they can either occur as a non-hereditary Carney's triad or they can occur as a hereditary Carney's Tatakis syndrome, okay. Rarely gist are also associated with neurofibromatosis type 1, that is NF1. Such cases of gist, they are multifocal. Most of them are located in the small bowel. The extremely rare, now usually majority of the gist, they are sporadic. 5 to 10% can be associated with a syndrome and the syndromic variety can be either sporadic or they can be as a part of a familial syndrome. Now, extremely, extremely rarely you can have familial gist which are caused by germline mutations of the kit and or far more rarely the PDGFR. Now remember as we saw that GIST can have three lines of mutation. The first line that is the conventional line is the P kit PDGFR mutation okay and the second line that is the SDH deficient variety okay. So as we have seen now both the kit and the PDGFR as well as the SDH deficient variety they can occur either in the sporadic manner or they can occur as a part of the hereditary syndrome okay. So they can be sporadic or hereditary. So, we have already seen that the SDH deficient variety, okay, they are mostly associated with the syndromic gist and they can either be in the hereditary or in the non-hereditary pattern, okay. Whereas, most of the gist, they are sporadic, that is most of the kit or PDGFRA, uh, you know, sporadic, they will have this mutation. But some of them, some of them, okay, they can have, you know, uh, very rarely familial gist or the hereditary variety of gist can be caused by germline mutations in the kit or far more rarely PDGFRA. So, these group of mutations can also occur as a familial gist. So, what I am trying to say very, very commonly, there are two groups of mutation, kit PDGFR and SDH deficient and both of them can occur as a sporadic and familial variety, okay. There is a syndromic gist in which they are more commonly associated with the SDH deficient variety which can either be uh, hereditary or non-hereditary and they can be kit PDGFR, majority of the kit PDGFR, they are sporadic. But very rarely they, they can be, you know, as a part of the familial gist, okay. So, kit mutations are more common as compared to the PDGFRA under the familial setting. Patients with these tumor, they tend to develop multiple gist throughout the GI tract that can behave aggressively. So, I hope this point is crystal clear to everyone about the etiology of the gist. Coming to the gross and the microscopic examination of the gist. So, macroscopically, if you see, Localized gist, they present as a well circumscribed mass of highly variable size, okay, ranging from incidental sub millimeter lesions to more than 20 centimeter. In larger lesions, the cut surface may show foci of hemorrhage, cystic change and or necrosis. Gastric gist often feature an intraluminal component and they may produce umbilicated mucosal ulcer. In the small intestinal gist, okay, they are more frequently expressed as external masses. Some gist feature a narrow pedicle, okay, linked to the serosal surface, the interruption of which may contribute to the generation of extra gastrointestinal gist. So, this is the intestine. So, by a pedicle, they might be, you know, going and growing towards the serosal surface. That is why abdominal metastasis and distant metastasis are very more common in the small bubble gist as compared to the gastric gist. Gastric gist, they have a high chances of local recurrence. Whereas small bubble gist, they are having a high chance of abdominal and distant metastasis. Advanced disease most often presents as the main lesion associated with multiple smaller nodules that may extend from the diaphragm to the pelvis. Invasion of surrounding organs such as the spleen and the pancreas can be observed in aggressive tumors. SDH deficient gist are often associated with a distinctive multinodular pattern of growth. So, the SDH deficient gist, okay, they have a distinctive multinodular pattern of growth. This is very, very important to understand, okay. So, right now we have read about the etiology, the basic uh, clinical features of the gist and the epidemiology we have seen in details, okay. So, now let us see, okay. So, now we are going to see basically the next that is the... <coughs> Yes, this is the basic gross image of gist as we can see. 
the tumor is solitary it is quite well circumscribed as we can appreciate and they are fleshy in nature larger tumors they can have areas of necrosis and hemorrhage as we can see certain cystic change can occur over here and or necrosis can be appreciated over here as well okay this is common with uh, in with regards to any large tumors okay. coming to the histopathology of the gist microscopically if you see gist exhibits a broad morphological spectra okay so morphologically if you see, microscopically they have a very broad uh, morphological spectrum anatomical location gastric versus small bowel seems to influence the histological appearance of the gist okay so most of the so first we will consider the gastric gist most of the gastric gist they are spindle cell tumors 70 percent they are spindle cell with epithelioid morphology seen in approximately 20 to 25 percent of the cases so two very broad categories of histological appearance is spindle cell and epithelioid variety okay and uh, the third uh, common variety is the mixed wherein you have both spindle and the uh, epithelioid variety mixed together which is constituting 10 percent of the tumor okay so most of the gastric is 70 percent are spindle cell 20 25 percent they are epithelioid and 10 percent they are mixed a very important thing you should remember that nuclear pleomorphism is quite uncommon in case of gist, especially in gastric gist. Now, if we look at the spindle cell variety, the spindle cell variety is characterized by the presence of bland spindle cells with faintly eosinophilic cytoplasm in a syncytial pattern, elongated nuclei with inconspicuous nuclei, artifactual paranuclear vacuoles are common in stomach gist. I will show you with the help of diagram as well. Distinctive. Now, within the spindle cell variety only, there are multiple histological patterns in the spindle cell variety of gist. So, one example, there can be sclerosing type, okay, especially in small tumors that often contain calcification. Then we are having the palisaded vacuolated subtype. It is one of the most common variety, whereas some examples show a diffuse hypercellular pattern. Very rarely, sarcomatoid features with substantial nuclear atypia and high mitotic activity can be observed as well. So, what are the distinct subtypes over here? Sclerosing variety, palisaded, vacuolated subtype is there, diffuse hypercellular and rarely sarcomatoid variety can be there in the spindle cell variety of the gastric gist. Then we have the other variety which is constituting 20 to 25% of the gastric gist that is the epithelioid gist. It is characterized by more rounder cells which is having clear to eosinophilic cytoplasm in sheets or nest. They have increased tendency for pleomorphism as compared to the spindle cell variety of gastric gist. They may show, uh, uh, you know, distinct kinds of morphological pattern, for example, sclerosing, discohesive, hypercellular pattern or sarcomatous uh, morphology, morphology with substantial atypia and mitotic activity. Now, myxoid stroma is rarely absorbed uh, and myxoid stroma is common with the epithelioid gist. So, epithelioid gist in comparison to the spindle cell, as we can see morphologically, they are more round. Secondly, very important, they tend to be more aggressive compared to the spindle cell variety and myxoid stroma is more commonly encountered with the epithelial gist as compared to the spindle cell variety of gastric gist. So, this is the basic of the microscopic examination of gastric gist. So, let us look at the diagram right now. So, if you look at the spindle cell variety, it is characterized by the presence of bland spindle cells as we can appreciate over here. The presence of bland spindle cells, faintly eosinophilic cytoplasm as you can appreciate over here. The spindle cells are very bland, faint eosinophilic cytoplasm is there. And sometimes they are present in a syncytial pattern as you will, you know, you, you will be mistaken. You will feel that all the nucleus is clubbed together without any intervening boundaries, okay. They have elongated nuclei with inconspicuous nucleolus. Artifactual, you can see the perinuclear vacuolation. So, around the nucleus, there is vacuolation. This is called as perinuclear vacuole, vacuoles. And this paranuclear or uh, vacuoles that we see, it is actually artifactual and it is more common in the stomach gist as we can appreciate. The next uh, common variety of the gastric gist is the epithelioid variety. It is characterized, if you can see the cells, they are more epithelioid, the nucleus is more round, they have a more clear to eosinophilic cytoplasm and they are present in sheets or nest as we can appreciate. Now, if you look over here, tendency to pleomorphism and mitotic rate is slightly higher as compared to the spindle cell variety as we can appreciate. So, they are more pleomorphic, okay, the, they have more tendency towards pleomorphism compared to the spindle cell type. Rarely, gist may feature, now remember, in general, gastric gist or usually majority of the gist they have a very bland morphology both in spindle and epithelial uh, variety but rarely a gist may feature a high grade morphology that is associated with a high mitotic count as we can appreciate over here over here also we can see a high mitotic count over here okay so rarely so high mitotic count and an aggressive nature in usual as a whole it is 
not that common with gist okay and if it is common it is seen more commonly in the epithelioid variety okay so if you see over this is a high power view of the epithelioid gist they are showing more amount of nuclear crowding more amount of nuclear pleomorphism hyperchromatia as you can appreciate irregular nuclear membrane as we can see over here okay some mitotic figures can be appreciated over here so they are more aggressive in nature and some of them are having more conspicuous nucleoli okay so epithelioid gist they have a tendency to have a more aggressive uh, you know behavior as compared to the spindle cell variety now we will look at the other types of gist that is a small intestinal gist if we see the small intestinal and colonic gist are usually spindle cell tumors with diffuse sheets or vague storiform arrangement of tumor cells the tumor with low biological potential often contains extracellular collagen globules these are called as sphenoid fibers now intestinal gist they may feature some a nuclear areas like for example this is the nucleus over here in between you will see that there are areas which doesn't contain any nucleus okay so this is very much resembling the varicose bodies of schwannoma okay so this area <laughs> is called the varicose bodies as we know okay so very importantly but very importantly how do you differentiate from schwannoma these lesions they will be negative for s100 s100 is positive in schwannoma these lesions will be negative for s100 this is how we differentiate these these intestinal gist from the uh, 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 schwannoma rectal gist most often feature a spindle cell morphology sdh deficient gist if you see characteristically they will uh, macroscopically they are multinodular that we have already seen and uh, you know they have a epithelioid morphology typically multinodular with plexiform mural mural involvement means that the whole thickness of the of the epithelium is involved the whole thickness of the gastric wall will be involved or the intestinal wall will be involved com completely unlike in the conventional gist lymphovascular invasion and lymph node metastasis are quite common in sdh deficient gist now there is some entity that is called as a d differentiated gist what is that very rarely morphological progression to a high grade sarcomatous morphology as i told you over here also that both with the spindle cell variety as well as with the epithelioid variety they can have a sarcomatous morphology so initially the tumor might have a bland morphology later on they might progress to have a very sarcomatous morphology and that is occurring very rarely and such cases they are termed as d differentiated gist usually these are high grade and they are kit negative and they can be observed either de novo or after therapy with imatinib okay d differentiated gist we call it as a d differentiated gist d differentiation can also be associated with heterologous epithelial myogenic or angiosarcomatous differentiation okay so as you can appreciate this is the small intestinal gist or the intestinal gist as i was telling you most commonly they are composed of spindle cells and they have prominent nuclear palisading that we can appreciate so if you see over here this area they have nuclear palisading this area you have nuclear palisading in between there is an area of a nuclearity okay so this is very reminiscent of a schwannoma again over here there is a very you know increased nuclear palisading as we can see and this area you can see they are basically not having similarly over here there is a increased palisading over here and we can see this is an area of a nuclear zones are there so these are all areas which are a nuclear okay so this is basically indicating a neural differentiation still this tumor if you go for s100 staining they are negative okay they are negative remember this point very common this is how you differentiate this type of gist and most commonly intestinal gist they show this kind of morphology now the presence again be it any variety of gist spindle cell or epithelioid as we can see over here some amount of nuclear pleomorphism can be appreciated but nuclear pleomorphism is very rare in a case of a gist be it any variety of gist be it gastric small intestinal or be it any uh, morphological pattern in general nuclear pleomorphism is very rare in case of a gist coming to the immunophenotyping of gist if you see immunophenotypically if you see most gist they are showing strong and diffuse expression of ckit or cd117 they are present in 95% of the cases and what is the positivity how does the positivity look like they are cytoplasmic membrane associated and sometimes perinuclear dot like staining is there however very small percentage less than 5% especially just with the pdgfra mutations may lack the kid expression or show very limited stage so 95